Hello everyone and welcome to another video of the Outtech Reviews. So today I got a $4,000 RTX 6000 video card, except for it's damaged. So can I fix this $4,000 video card? Let's get started. So first of all, what is the problem with the card? Well, it still boots into a Windows 10, but with some artifacts on the top part of the screen. It looks like to me that it has a faulty memory chip. So um, in order to find out, let's plug in my ultra fast $2 micro center USB, and then let's run NVIDIA Mats. It's an NVIDIA internal diagnostic tool to test the communication between the GPU and the memory chips. So um, let's get started. As you can see, these blocks on the screen, they're normal. They're used to test the read and write from the memory chips. However, what's not normal here is the green glitches you can see. That kind of confirms it is a problem with the memory chip. Let's wait for the test to finish, and then the software will give us a report on which exact memory chip is causing the issue. And the result here. So it's a fail, of course. And here we can type nano report.txt. It's going to give us a detailed report of which channel is causing a problem. In this case, B1 channel. So now it's time to take the video card apart and see what's wrong with the memory chip. So for those of you who don't know, RTX 6000 is basically a professional version of the Titan XP. It has exactly the same specs, but with slightly higher frequency. And it shares the same PCB with the Titan XP, with only some slight difference, such as the fan connector and the LED connector. So this one does not have a backplate. So to start, let's take out every single screws we can see on the back of the card. And next, let's take out the screws on the IO shield. Usually, this will set a PCB free from the heatsink. However, um, it seems like it's not wanting to go off. So I wonder, there might be some screws that's holding it on the front of the video card, underneath the shroud. So let's take out the shroud and see. So it's a classic NVIDIA blower style design with a blower fan at the end of the card and a heat sink that's covering the GPU. Um, in this case, it looks like it's just a copper heat sink. It's not either vapor chamber, but after inspecting it, I don't see any screws. And the heatsink itself wouldn't go off either. Mm, that's weird. Could it be the mounting bracket? But to my knowledge, the mounting bracket does not connect to PCB themselves. It only connects to the heatsink. But um, let's take it out, just to be sure. So after a close inspection, it's just some really sticky thermal pads. So, um, you have to really apply some force in order to take them off. I didn't do the best job to remove the heat sink. I still left some thermal pads on the actual video card. Um, now we need to remove those as well. Just a little tip here. Do not remove it with your hands because you're going to stretch the heat pad and there's no way you could restore it to the original size. So use some kind of tool. It's not going to be good as new but it's going to be much better than if you pull it by your hands. So now we have to expose PCB. This is how NVIDIA memory chips work. So it starts counterclockwise. The first one is A1, and the second one is A0, then B1, B0. And actually, B1 is the chip we're looking for. So to start, since this car was brand new when I got it, it could be that the soldering point is loose by the shocks during transportation. So uh, let's use a heat gun and try to reflow it to see if it will solve the problem. So there we go. After blowing it for a while, well, now it's really hot. So let's put the heatsink back. I'm not going to do the full assembly as we're going to test if it's working before we put everything back. There is a lot of screws. Good job, NVIDIA, to make it so complicated to take apart. But still I have to say, this is way easier than the Founders Edition 2080 Ti. Let's put it back to the test bench. Uh, okay, same thing. It seems the reflow doesn't help. So, it leaves us the last option, to replace the faulty memory chip. This is the memory chip it uses. 
I've tried to search it everywhere on Google and eBay, but it seems like they're all shipped from China. So I have no choice but to order it from China. But I have to ship DHL, so it should be here in about three days. We'll do the second part of this video when I get a memory chip. It should be a simple fix. So please subscribe if you don't want to miss that. That's it for today's video. If you liked the video, please hit the like button and subscribe. You can also join the discussion by leaving a comment below. Thanks for watching.